in the last video I was talking about that I had to build this H bridge also over here so I did so there it is um, I had to uh, change some code to make it compatible for two H bridges at the same time this was the H bridge that I already had with uh, with the multimeter uh, connected so I could see let's see if I can do that again see so you can see the current this is what we had I'm now doing it faster so it can't keep up but um, as you can see here the LEDs are going a bit faster as well so I did the same on this side so and you can see that they're not actually well they're in sync but they're like 90 degrees out of phase and that's what the stepper needs so I did it quite fast and here you can see it's actually turning it's turning really tiny steps and that's because of the micro stepping that's exactly what I want I'm now stepping it at 0.01 millimeters at the time and I'm doing about 100 micro steps per second so that's awesome Woohoo! let's see if I can do it slower and then if I can do it faster I want to see the boundaries of this. Let's first do it slower so I can really see the tiny steps that I can make. I'm now doing two steps per second. I can hardly see it move, but it does move. And this is what I was talking about, about precision and resolution. I, I'm now moving it 0 0.1 millimeters, no 0 0.01 millimeters every half second but it's so slow you can hardly see it and that's the precision that I'm looking for so let's see how fast we can go might also be very interesting right? there yeah, you can see it, it's going now da, da, da. okay I put it faster now it's now moving at 5 milliseconds it does one micro step so probably it can go faster um, and I probably should because if the belt is going this slow that will take a long time to get from from this side from this side all the way to that side I have to pull half of the belt there and in this rate that takes an hour or something so let's see if I can go faster alright there we go it's making a funny sound as well hello focus yeah there we are this is probably the fastest that I can go in the microcontroller and it's doing uh, a lot of fancy stuff here Woo! it's like a discotheque let's turn out the lights disco dancing Woo! yeah man that's fancy that's a fancy age bridge but the thing is it should you know turn faster and it does and at this rate it's not gigantically fast but it is very accurate and probably this is fast enough to um, to make the thing go I can try to go faster let's go beyond milliseconds let's talk microseconds oh yeah even faster but I'm not quite sure why is this making this uh, sound. This must be the full steps that I'm taking, or it sounds like a like a heavy V8 engine or something. That I don't think that's supposed to happen. So I have to dig in a bit more. Maybe that has to do with um, uh, with the normal steps being stronger than the micro steps or something. I'm not completely sure what this means. I'll dig into it. And even the disco is more fancy. Yeah. Okay, I decided to go five times more fast. Let's see what that does. I'm not Whoa! What the hell? It's going now at 100 US. It does a micro step. So 100 microseconds, it does a step. Well, that's quite fast. That's not bad. But the sound is not really fancy. Look at this here. I don't see even, I don't even see it blinking anymore. It's just like you know on. Well actually the blue LED is going really fast on and off. 
is actually going all the steps low so 40 micro steps up 40 micro steps down then being off for 80 micro steps and on again but on the camera it just appears to be on all the time that's how fast it is going and probably I can even go faster but it, it just threw off the, the gear it wasn't attached it just threw it in here <laughs> so and you can see it's it doesn't look fast but it is quite fast and I'm happy except for the noise I'm not completely sure so if I lift it off the table I can feel it vibrate a little bit it's not that bad but as soon as I put it on the table the whole table becomes like a like a sound amplifier or something it's maybe I should cushion it a little bit or maybe I'm doing something wrong I have to look into that but the whole principle of two H bridges sine waves and all the firmware and the schematics it's working the only thing I don't like yet is that I'm working at 6.5 volts which makes the motor less strong uh, I want to crank it up to 12 because I have there the 12 volts uh, power supply anyway yeah I can zoom in see I have the 12 volt power supplies there that I want to use so I need to ramp it up to 12 volts that will make the motor stronger um, but I need some resistors to put in series with the motor so I've got some power resistors that I can play around with and see if I can come up with a good um, balance between that but for now I'm happy yeah I think the f I found a reason for the for the noise these uh, signals should be all nice and square but as you can see uh, when both sides of the H bridge you know when both H bridges are conducting uh, you can see there's a lot of ringing going on on the signal which also should give ringing on the on the on the current and on the on the fats so I have to try to do something to make the ringing on the signals uh, less pronounced and that should also reduce the, the sound in the engine uh, see as it goes alone it's not a problem but as soon as the other one comes at the, at the same time it becomes a problem so let's see if I can uh, reduce the ringing very interesting the first question is uh, a question that I get asked a lot it's about hypnofan where are the LEDs or is it a projection are the LEDs attached to the blades in some way because I looked at it and I cannot find them no it's not attached to the blades that's the whole point it's an optical illusion um, so I uh, opened a, a hypnofan so you can have a sneak peek inside and you can see where the LEDs are but I'm not going to explain in detail how it works because that's the magic right if you really want to know buy one off my website the second question is uh, why don't you just buy a ready-to-go H-bridge chip instead of building your own one with uh, discrete uh, components like transistors well that's a very good question I get this uh, asked uh, a lot uh, well the main reason is um, I like to do it myself that's the most important reason uh, I'm just a do-it-yourselfer I like figuring out how the H bridge works and uh, I can control it but there's also a practical uh, thing to it well first of all you learn something with ready to go chips you don't learn anything but the, the other reason is it's way more flexible I mean I looked at the chip that you suggested um, and it's a 2 amp max um, so yeah the motor is also 2 amps or maybe it was a 3 amps I don't know but anyway it's kind of tight and it could work with some cooling and stuff like that it could work but let's say that I want to upscale um, and buy a bigger motor then I cannot use the, that chip anymore I need to you know uh, do two parallel or something I don't know uh, with the circuit I designed now, which wasn't that much work, I, I can just, you know, throw in some other fat or put a fat in parallel or something like that. I can go up to 20, 30 amps, no problem. Like 80 volts, 30 amps, no problem whatsoever. I can just, you know, do it. 
with jelly bean parts. Also the part that was suggested, or these kind of parts, they're like 15 bucks. I, I searched some websites, I found them for 15 bucks. Maybe if you do large quantities or you search a bit more, maybe, maybe it's 10 bucks. But my uh, H-Bridge is about 4 bucks. 4! I mean that's half the price and I can do like 3 times more power. And I learned something. Um, and the, there's another reason. Uh, to do it yourself is um, let's say in in a couple of years I want to do another one and I want to order the chip that you suggested but it's not for sale anymore there's some newer version or not at all or the pin layout changed I don't know that's also a risk that you, that you take um, you know for future surfacing and, and, and repairing if I choose if I use regular FETs and transistors, there will always be transistors that I can buy. There will always be resistors that I can buy. So it's way more secure for the future if I want to expand, repair, put more power, you know, make it again. I'm, I'm less dependent on these uh, uh, manufacturers. And the other reason, there's another reason, the last one, is I was looking into the manual of this thing and you still need uh, a lot of external components and where you have to place them uh, you have to look up the manual it took me quite some time I was reading one hour in the manual to figure out how the thing works and um, where to put the external components well in one hour I designed my own age bridge and I know exactly how it works so these are the main reasons why I do it. Enough about that. I have to go. See you next week. Bye!